So mist filters like these are probably, I would say, the second most common filter for video shooters. The first would be ND filters, but that's like almost a given, like you need to be using an ND. So optional filters, I'd say some version of a diffusion filter would be the most popular. Basically what they do, this one is from Nisi. This is a one quarter black mist. And what diffusion filters in general do is they just diffuse the light coming into the lens. And what that looks like on camera is some bloom or halation to the highlights, a slight decrease in overall saturation a lot of the time, and just a slightly softer image. And how they do this is if you look really closely, you can see there's a bunch of tiny specks on the glass, which depending on the type of filter will be different materials or different colors. And basically what that'll do is if you have a front filter, it'll just scatter the light that is hitting the front of the lens. Or if you have a rear filter, it'll just scatter the light as it comes out of the lens into the sensor. And this all works very similar to diffusing a light source. Normally when you have it on like, you know, using, using a softbox or something like that, diffusing light still works the same in both cases. So basically you'll lose a slight amount of total brightness for that softer light. And there's a few different types of diffusion filters and Generally, they all do a very similar thing. There's like black mist, there's white mist, there's smoke filters, but in general, mist filters will look pretty clear and they'll just have those tiny specks on the glass. And it's more about the characteristics of the diffusion that those different filters will provide. Speaking of filters, I don't have any mist filters on right now, but I do have an ND filter on there. It's a three stop from Freewell in this Freewell M2 kit that came out not that long ago. So basically it's a magnetic system that has, I mean, I got the five pack, which has three different ND filters, a CPL and a UV filter, as well as this nice little cap that actually has a handle on it. So you can magnet that on and then you can flip up the handle to take it off a lot easier than like grabbing around the edge. But if we look at it here, I've got the three stop on right now. If I take that off, I'll just grab the edge and take that off and I'm gonna throw on a six stop just like that and now the image is significantly darker. Then we also have a CPL and a UV filter. If you add too many, you can get a little bit of vignetting but if you do wanna stack filters, you can because they're all just magnetic. The base does screw on much like the other systems that I am using in this video. The one downside that I think this system has is at least this kit, it only comes with a three, six and 10 stop. So if I wanted to do one, two, four, five stops, any of those, I couldn't. So I think this would be an amazing system if it came with every single stop, maybe even up to just six stops. So then you can change from zero to one to two to three rather than three to six. Freewell did send me this and I do have an affiliate link, but they're not in any way sponsoring this video. So just there's a link down there if you are interested. Otherwise, let's uh, put on a mist filter here. Okay, now on there, we've got the Nisi Swift one to five stop VND set at three stops, so it's the same exposure, and the one quarter black mist from Nisi for the Swift system. Now I did a whole video on the Nisi Swift system, go check that out over here if you're interested, but this is a one quarter strength from Nisi, and really you can tell from the highlights up here, and I'll put up a, a shot of before I put it on, and you know, it's not a huge difference, but it is sort of a subtle little glow on the highlights, which is kind of the entire point of mist filters like this. And like I mentioned, this is a black mist filter, so the specs of whatever material is on the glass is black versus white. And I don't have any white mist filters or anything else. There's like glimmer glass and snow mist and glow mist and all that sort of stuff from all these different brands. They call it all different things. But basically it's the color of the diffusion material on the glass and that'll cause different characteristics. Like I said, I don't have anything else. I only have these two mist filters. This is the Polar Pro Recon one, and I'll put that on in just a second. But it'll just affect the characteristics of the bloom inhalation on those highlights and maybe the overall contrast of the image. Okay, now let's quickly swap it for the Polar Pro Recon. Okay, this is the Polar Pro Recon VND without the mist filter. So now we've got the mist filter on and this is a one quarter mist. They have different strengths as well. They have one half. Nisi also has, I think, a one half and a one eight. Both the ones I have are one quarter. However, personally, I think they're quite different. This one from Polar Pro seems more like a one eighth from other brands. So I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, I guess that's just something that, you know, different brands will do different things. 
I'm not sure if other Polar Pro ones are like this as well. So basically if I need a, one, a proper one quarter, I'll use the Nisi. If I need a more like a one eighth, a more subtle look, then I'll go with the Polar Pro. And when it comes to those systems in general, as you saw me put them on, they're both sort of press on systems with the secondary filters. So the primary filter, which is the VND, or you have a base with nothing, you screw them on and then you can press on the other ones. With the Nisi, you just sort of press on the filters and it just sort of friction fits on. And with the Polar Pro, you saw there's those clips there that you sort of squeeze to bring on and off. Now, the one issue with that is if you put it on sideways and you have a pretty wide lens, you will see it in the top and bottom of your image. Like if you put it on sideways, you'll see it like here and here. I put it on horizontally one time, but I was filming vertically and I didn't think about it and I could actually see the, see the lines. So be aware of that. But if you put it on in the same orientation as your camera, you'll be fine. And in general, the benefit that the Nisi has is you can stack more than one filter on top of the VND. Whereas with the Polar Pro, you've got one secondary filter and that's it. Whereas with the Nisi, I can take this other press on filter and it can be any filter. This is the four stop solid ND. And then I can just stack those filters. Like I mentioned before with the free wall ones, if you stack too many filters, you'll get vignetting. But I think that is an advantage that the Nisi has over the Polar Pro. And it's also just a bit of a smaller and easier system to use. And like I mentioned before, the strengths, they're both one quarter, but they're clearly different. And when it comes to strength, the bigger the fraction, so the smaller the number on the bottom of the fraction, the more diffused it'll be. So you'll have a stronger effect on a one half versus a one quarter and then a one eighth. But because there is that variation between brands, maybe don't trust it too much, but if you're using the same brand, you can probably pretty well tell which is gonna be stronger or weaker. Now, why should we use mist filters or why do people use them? And I think the biggest reason, one, they just kind of make things look a little bit nicer and you could just stop there and just like they look a little bit nicer. But how people mostly describe it is they take off the like digital edge of modern sensor technology. Modern lenses and modern sensors are very clean on digital cameras and a lot of people don't like that. And they often use the word clinical kind of as an insult, not an insult, but like a downside. So they can sort of take off that digital edge or whatever you want to call it. But basically they just soften the image a little bit and add a little bit of character that maybe these super clean lenses and sensors won't have because a lot of people really love to talk about character. I'm going to make a video about character soon so subscribe so you don't miss that one and especially with the halation that these can provide it can kind of make things look a little bit more like film which apparently everybody wants and now is the question can you do this in post so you don't have to you know buy filters or even use filters or allow the flexibility to use this effect or not because if you shoot it in camera with a mist filter on or with some other diffusion filter on you're kind of stuck with that look and there's not really much you can do about it. Whereas if you shoot it very clean with a clean lens, no character filters whatsoever, and you can make the similar effect in post, then you do have that flexibility. So I'm gonna go and test that, see if I can get the same effect as these sort of filters, which is very subtle, see if I can get the same effect in post and if it's worth it. So just really quickly, I tested with glow and halation in DaVinci Resolve on the color page to try and make the same effect. And with glow, literally all I did was change the threshold. So that means anything brighter than that will just have that sort of faint glow to it. You can obviously adjust all the other parameters as well. I didn't really need to, and I feel like I've got a pretty similar effect. So here's the same shot with the free well filter on, which to be fair, I didn't really notice it at the time, but it does add a little bit of magenta. So the colors aren't quite the same, but the effect of the diffusion at least is pretty similar. So this is with the Freewell ND filter. And then this is with the Nisi Swift with both the ND and the mist filter. And then here's with the Polar Pro ND and mist filter. So the benefit you have from doing it this way, and there probably are better ways to do it, but just really quickly, I wanted to see if I could try and match it very easily. And yeah, you can do the same effect. But the benefit here is you can adjust it. You, you don't have to stick with whatever you shot in camera. You can adjust, you can go really strong, really weak, whatever you want to do. You could also mask out, you know, just the bits that you want to glow, whereas you could put over the whole image and then it's going to affect the skin tones as well as the lights in the background. Back to the main part of the video. 
All that being said, I generally do prefer to do things in camera. One, because I prefer shooting over editing, but also it makes sense. Like things just are more natural if you get them right in camera on the day versus doing everything in post with computers and stuff. But maybe it's worth it for you so you don't have to buy the filters or if you want that extra flexibility. So that's all I'm gonna say about mist filters. Let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts about whether you use them or don't, whether you like to do it in post instead. Let me know, I'm curious to see what other people think. I shot this whole video on the Nisi Athena 50mm, which I'm gonna do a video on very, very soon. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss that as well. Go watch either of my videos on the Nisi Swift or Polar Pro Recon systems. And I'll see you next time. Do the other things, okay, bye.